Hi, this is Jack Downs. I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a demo on the navigation exercise. Yes, this is an exercise that you can hand in and it'll be graded or be processed as part of a quiz. However, more than that, this is an exercise that's going to give you the, the kind of skills that you need to create navigation and adjust navigation on your, on your projects and on future things that you do, um, in particular on the resume where you must have navigation. We're going to be doing horizontal navigation, which is by far the most common these days, not vertical. Um, and at the end of this exercise, there's a bunch of text, uh, which gives you some more background information. Now, if you have the actual exercise in front of you, the piece of paper, you'll see that it starts with, after some explanation, where it describes the fact that we, we used to do navigation almost solely with floating, but now we use more likely to use Flexbox, but either could be used and then I would go right into the Flexbox one. But I guess it makes more sense actually to do the floating one first because the floating is the old style. So do the float first, then the Flexbox, then I'll show you some other versions that are in here and just ready for you to look at. Okay, so I have uh, my navigation file open and you should have downloaded yours also as per the instructions. Let's uh, run this in Chrome and see what we have. What we have is um, four chunks of navigation and then some other stuff from old, an old file that you don't care too much about. So we're going to do this one first, number two. These two are kind of done for you. We'll talk about them and release them. Then we'll come back and do number one, which is the flex. And here we go. Go to the area which says this is for in-class use, but then slide down to the float section here. Mentions a handout from an old textbook, which I'll probably give to you. And here we go. Um, we want to first go to this um, to, to deal with the, the LIs. You see, we've had to create IDs that have to do with each of these chunks of stuff to separate them out. To, so I can do one thing to this one, one thing to the next one. These are all just called nav. Um, so nav LI is, of course, the, the list items in the container, which is called nav. And the simple thing we'll do first is tell them to get rid of the bullets. So let's do list style type none. And we'll save and run it. And you'll see where we're working when we do this. We've lost the bullets there. Good. Okay. So this is how we start with navigate with navigation starting first for the, from a from a UL and unordered list. Now we're going to remove the padding and margins from the list. And we'll size, set a size in this element so we can more easily center it using the auto centering technique. So this is the UL. So it's the container of the LIs. It's the thing we're going to be dealing with here. Give a padding of zero, margin zero, top, bottom, and auto. So it is going to be centered left and right. But to be centered, it needs to have a size. And this will be a generic size. This size will have to change, sorry, 350 pixels, depending on oh, how many items we have, what font we use, the size of the font, and, and so on, what styling we did to them. So, but for now, it's just a number to have something in there. So we save and run it. Now it is centered. It may not look centered, but it's centered on 350 as if this whole area here is centered because they have to be lined up now. We have to break them out of that, that, that vertical idea. And to do that, we're going to float them. We're going to float all the list items. So we're back here to list items. Float left. Oops, hold on just a second. Yes, you probably noticed I did not use my semicolon here. So they're all floating, but they're all kind of like jammed together because we don't have things like margin, padding, and so on. And also, they're still all underlined also. So we're going to make these little anchors, that's the, the links themselves now. We're going to talk about them. We're going to have them display as blocks, so we can do some block-like things to them. So now we're down into the A. So we're going to do the styling of the A's. So we're going to say display block. And we're going to say margin, IPX. Padding, padding, five pixels, 
So a little margin, a little padding to set them off a little bit. Uh, the reason for all these will be more apparent. And we're going to tell this to have text decoration, text decoration number. Remove, remove the underline. Okay, so we'll save that. Okay, well, it sort of worked, but what happened? Well, the number 350 I had was just a generic number. Okay, so now I could change that number to a little bigger so they'll fit in here. They're floating, but they're not quite floating right because one float dropped because that number wasn't big enough. So just change it to another number. I'll try 370, maybe 365, maybe 375. You just do trial and error here. And now I line up okay. Now you could just add some regular styling to this link. The, this the, this text now like you know change the color and so on um maybe some uh, letter spacing some bolding or whatever and you wouldn't have to do much else remember navigation doesn't have to be super fancy it has a purpose to do it's just supposed to be visible and usable um what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do some um go ahead and do some link styling but the link styling is going to be a little different than normal link styling. And this is, and when we do styling of links for navigation, we kind of break some of the rules a little bit. There is no, we don't do an A link anymore. We do an A hover and focus. Um, and we might do a you are here effect here also. So we want a nav A first. Again, this is the plain old A. We're going to give it a color. Ah. Let's make it zero zero black and a background color of F A F zero that's zero not O E six and a no that's enough for now. So that would be the the links as they kind of just sit there. It's sort of like a static state, but not exactly, because we do things differently for, for navigation. Then we have the hover and the focus. We'll do the same thing with the color. And the background color will be different, though. Let's make it, they'll both be the same as each other though. A, D, 8, F, 6, D. So I'm going to do the same thing for hover and focus. These are typically the same. Remember, focus is just for accessibility reasons. Let's go ahead and do this. So we have got little um, boxes around them. We could do some uh, curved edges or something like that. And we can also do a you, you are here effect. The you are here effect is the idea that you, this is not required. And some sites do and some, sometimes sites don't. Do something different to the, the navigation link on the page where you are to make it apparent to you that that's where you are. And I would call that the you are here effect. So um, if we look into our HTML, we could see that we have on each of these here an ID of here. Actually, we're doing it for both of them. Um, and probably they shouldn't be the same. Actually, I'm going to call this one here one. Okay. Um, for, the, for the first item, for the, that first link. So what are we going to do with that? In this case, we'll call it here one, here one A. We're going to do the background color as if it was already clicked on. Save and run it. Now the idea is it's as if it's already been used. Now what I could do is I could change because it's got like a, the hover effect here. I could though change the color in here. And I kind of like this idea. 
change the color to white. I like those three caps, not really required, just tradition. Okay, so I still get a little bit of a hover feedback. I kind of like getting that. It's saying the mouse is doing something, but I'm already there. And then I would click on these. Did you notice, by the way, that all these links in here, these are all dummy links. When we want to make a dummy link, a link that's just sitting there not doing anything, we just stick a hashtag in there. And did you also notice that we don't have any, any visited in here? We do not want navigation to have a visit. We don't want any navigation to stick and change to a different color or something like that. We want it always to be active in the same way, except maybe not the here, which is active in a different way, perhaps. Okay, now we're going to move on to the flex. Okay, now let's continue with the flex navigation. First thing is to remove the bullets and make the list as um, kind of neutral as possible. So I'm in this area here, use for class, see flex. Nav flex UL, here we are. I'm going to make a margin of zero and padding of zero. And then list style type none. Ah. Okay, so what did that do? You can probably guess. So we're dealing with this one up here now. So just sort of start to prepare them a little bit. Now we're going to do two flexbox commands. We're going to tell we're going to, the UL in this case can be the flex container. We don't need to make a separate container. And we don't have to call a container either. The UL is the thing that holds all these items. So let's let it be the container. We can tell let it say display flex to start that flexing flexbox working, and then we can say to the same container, just justify content center. As in the case of centered navigation, you don't want centered navigation, you can do something else. You can do end or start or whatever. So uh, it's now centered. We don't have to worry about that size of 350 and getting it right or so on. That's the nice thing about centering with Flexbox is it's just everything is just nicely centered without having to size it. Okay. Um, next we can just dress up the links a little bit. And to do that we're again going to be causing them to have a display of block. Excuse my rustling papers. Let me get my notes here. So we're in the A, the nav A. Here we go. Sorry, I had a little glitch there. My recorder decided to stop. So here we are in the, the, the A, Navflex A. I'm going to tell this to display block. So those, those links act like little blocks. Border, one pixel, solid. Default is black. Uh, border radius. Point five em. Padding. Point five em and one em. Remember that when we have two of them, it's top, bottom, left, right. Margin all the way around 0.5 EM. Could be using pixels for these, we'd be fine. Text, de text decoration, none. No underlining, save this. Okay, so we've got little rounded edges on here. Actually, the reason we're getting the blue is because they're links, right? 
So they're all being there. So that's actually the link itself that's been styled that way. Just some styling. Of course, you wouldn't have to do this. You could do your own styling. Of course, your own colors, your own fonts, all that stuff. So now let's give the link some behavior. Again, um, this is a little different than normal link styling. Let's go ahead and have a nav, navflex A. Actually, let's go back to the navflex A, to the plain old A, which is kind of like static color. Hashtag 000, zero, zero black. And background color. Let's do hashtag F. We're going to do the FAF0E6 right there, so I'll take it. I used that color before. And we're going to do the hover and then the focus, the same thing. Well, their own same things. So color, whoa. FFF for white. And the background color, same as we did earlier. Ah, I'll just type it. For the other one, for the floating one, hashtag F, that's F A F zero, that one. And we'll do the same thing for the next, for the hope focus. Yeah, my tabbing is screwed up. Like that, something like that. It would have worked the other way, of course. Just like try to stay organized. We'll go ahead and run this. So now I get that hover going on. Sorry, this this one right here, hover. Um, you know, on the hover, I think we better to have our text stay, well, it could go, it could go like that, but it's hard to just read them. We could of course tell our text to stay um, a different color. Um, um, what else could we do? Um, it's supposed to be, see it went to white and so on. Um, hold on just a second. Well, that's what I did wrong. You probably saw it yourself. I mean, it wasn't wrong, it's just different. Um, in the instructions, I actually said to make the color for the hover and focus, this AD color here. You'll see that in your instructions. And that will look a little different. We won't have that. We'll turn to brown, and therefore the white makes more sense there. Um, and then we can, of course, do a you are here kind of effect again, if we like. This time we would, can, we'll leave it to navflex here, A, whatever, something like that. We could tell it to have a um, background color. Just change the background color, perhaps, um, to the that A D whatever, which is the same thing right here. And if we wanted to, we could change the color, which is the foreground color, which is not in your instructions, but it's kind of like what we did last time. This time, let's see what this looks like right like this. Okay, so we don't get a hover, but we could change it so it goes to a the other color, which this case is if we went between white and black. So we still get a little bit of hmm, I'm not getting it. Let me just check that out. Okay, I'm gonna let you work on that <clears throat> yourself if you wish to try to change that you are here effect. You'll see another version of it in another tutorial, a big uh, Dreamweaver tutorial you'll be doing soon. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot. You've got some more code here to look at. Scroll down to this nav1 area. This is from an old textbook uh, exercise. And it's just another way to do floating navigation. If you delete this comment code and this comment code, it will release it. And here's one from a, a web source, another floating navigation. Just because these use float doesn't mean you couldn't use the same styling, if you like it, or the same ideas, and apply it with flex. Of course, it might be actually a little bit simpler. But you can look through the code and learn a, bit, a little bit more, more about it. I'm going to save this and, and release these. And you see 
This one is a color bar with some hover on it, and it's still got underlining. And of course, you could style things the way you want. And this one is a little color blocks with a little outline on them, which are very nice and have a different kind of feedback. Neither one of these have a UR here effect, which is fine too. So I'll leave those with you also. So let me move on to the handout and the rest of the things in it. Um, navigation design ideas. You do need in your resume one piece of navigation per page. Um, horizontal, horizontal navigation is much more likely to be used. You don't need to have a fancy bar. It can just be text. It can be on the left, the right, center. It can be above or below the H1. You work out that yourself where you want it, how, what do you want it to look like. should work in your color scheme, though. Remember, these, these are a different set of commands for hover and focus and stuff. It makes sense to actually put them near or at the very bottom of your CSS. because It's like changing the base link styling, for instance. Um, and make sure that you're using IDs and classes and or classes to make it make them special and separate. So you don't want the same thing happening to those links as happen to all your other links. So it's not just a plain old A link or sorry, A focus, or A hover. It's has to specify for that area, which probably is inside a div or in something else, which is given a an ID or a class, probably an ID, and that may very well be the word nav, which makes sense. Don't need a fancy navigation bar, one set on top. If you want it someplace else, probably ask me at or near the top. There was a time years and years ago where multiple navigation might be on a page, like something at the bottom also, but I don't think that's really the case to be done now. You could, but don't have to use a your here effect. All right. Um, you have to have identify, identify it as nav or a div called nav. There is an HTML element called nav. You could use that. Um, I encourage you to use Flexbox, and I've given you examples. And there are others. There's lots of tutorials out there. You could use these links, or you could just do it yourself. Just search Flexbox Navigation Bar, for instance, or Easy Flexbox Navigation. And you get lots of other tutorials for other ways to do it. And then in floating ones, here's some snippets. And there are some vertical examples, too. Let's see if this link works. Yeah. Easy Vertical CSS, CSS Menu. Perhaps you like vertical navigation and want to use that instead. You certainly may. And that's the way that you would do it. Um, other than that, and the instructions, um, tutorials, I just encourage you to make the get your navigation to work on one page. And once you get it set there, then just copy and move it, move that same stuff to all the other pages. Once you get it working properly on one, and then the only thing you'd have to change, if you even use it, is a UR here effect. We'd have to change from page to page. That's all. Hope you things work out well for your navigation.